Welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2022 for the start of my new career mode. For context, I'll be playing this entire series on extreme difficulty. Next to that, I'll use the DB Barnard 2022 available on the Steam Workshop. Last year, we started off with a pro team, Aeolo Cometa. We brought them to World Tour and fought against the best of the best in the best races. For this series, I'd like to take it one step further. We will start a division lower in the Conti division. And the team we'll play with is Tudor Pro Cycling. In its essence, quite a young team when it comes to the riders available in the squad. But loads of talent. Next to that, a pretty beautiful kid in my opinion. And since a few months ago, Fabian Cancellara is the manager of this team. Obviously, I decided to kick Cancellara straight out of the management and took his place. Because that's what we do around here. Just like with every career mode, today's episode will be a bit more in-depth when it comes to the uh, season preparation, setting up the scouting, setting up the rider objectives, the planning, and so forth. So, it's gonna be a busy day. But before we do that, let's take a look at the most important part of our team, our riders. The most talented rider in our team is Alex Bonin, a 20-year-old Frenchman. Stats-wise, he's a puncher with 70 hills, but he can also climb quite well with 67 mountain. But just like the majority of French climbers, his time trial is terrible. While he already is so strong, that does not mean he will stop here because he's got plenty of talent left. He's currently 3-star rating, he can grow up to 5, so that's quite significant. The next rider is a rider you might know from our Yolo Cometa career mode. I'm talking about Alex Vogel, 22 years old and a sprinter with 69 sprint and 69 acceleration. He's currently 3-star rated, but he can grow up to 4, so he can become a bit better when it comes to his sprint, so that's great. Next to Vogel, we've got another sprinter in our squad, 68 sprint on Robin Foidevaux, one year older than Vogel. He's got 70 acceleration though, and plenty of room to grow there, because he can become a 5-star sprinter. That's quite high. Next to Alex Bonin, I'm pretty sure that Yanis Vazar is our second biggest talent. He can grow up to a 4.5 star rider with plenty of room to grow and he's a climber, 68 mountains, 65 hills. Nonetheless, likely not a stage racer because his time trial is terrible. Another climber in our team is the 21-year-old Alois Charin, 66 mountains, 69 hills. Arguably a bit of a puncher more than a climber I dare to say, but his potential does not seem to be overly high, although he can still grow in punching. Our next rider is Peter Kellerman, 66 hills, 66 cobbles, kind of a Strade-like character. We've got one British rider in the squad, Sean Flynn, quite a decent talent though, he's a puncher slash sprinter with 67 sprints, 68 hills and 69 acceleration. Those were the 7 highest rated riders in our squad at this moment, but it does not stop there. We've got 9 more riders in our squad that you'll get to know during every single race this year. Overall, a young and talented team, but also not a team that is ready for the goals we've set. So across the upcoming seasons, we will try and grow out the talent we already have and try and attract new talent from other teams. And using the new scouting system in PCM 2022, I'll try and find great new talent across the board as well. Let our mission begin. First things first, I'll take a look at the calendar of our team, ditch a few races that I don't want to do, add a few that I do want to do, so that we can assign them to riders afterwards. There we go. In year one, we've got a pretty obvious Conti schedule, starting off with Marseillaise, Bessage, Antalya, and so forth, through French races, through Croatian races. We also ride the likes of Tour of the Alps, probably the hardest race on our schedule this year. Quite a few stage races with mountains, so that's pretty cool. Obviously, the national championships in June, and a pretty early end of the season in August. When it comes to our sponsor objectives, I'm pretty positive about them. I feel like the majority are definitely possible. Not really this one though. Gran Premio Lugano, top 10. Why? It's on the exact same date as the national championship. So I don't have riders left for this race. But when it comes to the most important goal, stage wins at Route Toxitani and Circuit Sard, those should be doable. And especially that top 10 Argo, I think. In addition to setting up the schedule, I've already done the planning of each rider for the entire year. So that's already loads of work done. It actually didn't take that long because we don't have too many races set up this year. Now what is left? Setting the rider objectives. I'll start off simple. I'll select every single rider and delete all their goals. There we go. Let's get started with setting up their goals individually. For our star puncher, Alex Bonin, it's pretty simple. GP Marseillaise, Circuit Sard, Route d'Occitanie, and finally Limousin. So I focus on the most important sponsor objectives of the team. Our British puncher, Sean Flynn, will go to Istrian Spring Trophy. He won a stage there in real life. After that, Quatre Jours de Dunkerque, which is 
six days, which is a lie. And then also a focus on Ruud Doxitani, an important race for us, and Limousin to finish off the season for him. The first of our two sprinters will focus on stage wins in Sarre, Quatre Jours de Dunkerque, and also in Patu Charente. The first is actually pretty important for our sponsor objectives. Peter Kellerman is one of the only riders with a decent couple stat in our squad, 66, so his focus lies on GP de Nair and Trobro Leon, couple races. Vogel's objectives start off early. Antalya is the first race he focuses on, and Quatre Jours de Dunkerque as well for the sprints. We've got Ruud Doxitani for that one sprint stage to get that one stage win, and Poitou Charande with multiple options as well. Yanis Fazar has a pretty packed schedule. Alps first, which is fine, but then also Occitani and Österreich Rundfahrt just after each other, so I don't know how well those objectives will work together. There we go, the rider objectives of every rider is done. Nonetheless, as you saw, I did not use the revamped objectives page right here too much, mainly because I wanted an individual customized approach for every single rider. After doing the rider objectives, we need to go to the preseason screen and set this one up. Usually I just sort it by first objective, and then look at the amount of weeks for a race. For example, Tour of Antalya, five weeks. Because that's relatively early, that means that Alex Vogel needs to be quite alright fairly early in the season, so I'll put him on high for now. Antalya is not the earliest goal in the season though, looks like Alex Boudin is going to Marseillaise, which needs very high then. There we go. Isrin Spring Trophy is in 9 weeks, so normal is fine. I'll do the same with Sarf. I won't go too low on any of the races to be honest, that's a bit too much to my liking. Of the Alps can go on normal as well. There we go, this page is done. When it comes to our training camp, I'll try and find something relatively cheap, just like this one. Perfect. There we go, let's select all our riders, all 10 days, and we've got a perfect training camp set up now. Taking a look at our staff, we've got two trainers at the moment, a modern trainer and a traditional trainer. The first of which is regional, the second of which is national, so a bit better. We are missing a groundbreaking trainer, so let's try and find a Swiss one. Here we go, Jean Nutli, he will do the job, 3k per month salary, a regional trainer, let's get him hired. We've now got a trainer in every single training style, so we can do our training. Lastly, we had to go to every single rider page individually to set up the trainer. Now we can do so all from this screen. Such a quality of life feature. Anyway, the majority of our riders don't even have a training stall yet, so we can wing this pretty much. Let's first set up the axis of training. We've got Alex Baudin, can be a puncher indeed, that fits him so, so well. Trainer can be Baumann because he has no training style. I'll go ahead and do this for every single rider now. There we go, everyone is set up perfectly. Obviously, we'll have to check up on this page every single month to see if training styles have changed for riders so we can adapt the trainer. On to the flagship feature of PCM 2022 then, the scouting. One thing I would like is if you could like hover over a scout to see the regions they're good at. Because on the staff page, it shows, for example, that Inselvini is good when it comes to the German, Italian, and Swiss region. And Mayer is good when it comes to Switzerland, Germany, and Italy as well. So clearly we need to focus on those three regions. I'm not sure I can financially afford this, but I will get another scout, Isaka Sawadawogo, because I'd love to scout in the African regions north and south. Firstly, let's send our newly hired Sawadawogo to Africa. We've got the northern and the southern region to choose from. Actually, I think we can send them to both. We spend one green block out of the six he has to send him to the northern part of Africa. Let's do the same with the southern part, but now, where else can I send this guy? Actually, I think I'll keep it like this. I feel like you can scout too many regions in PCM 2022, so I'll try and limit myself a bit. Both Inselvini and Meyer can focus on the European region, because I'm pretty sure that Inselvini wants to go to Italy, and I want to offer him that. There we go. He can use his three knowledge points there. Next to that, I'll send him to Switzerland as well. There we go. Actually, I'll send Meyer there, because he's got better knowledge in that region. When it comes to Germany, Inselvini seems to be the better choice. Three knowledge there. Oh, wait a second. On the right side, we've got something called the efficiency of a scout. If we have too many regions per scout, they become less efficient. For example, in Selvini is just regular efficiency, while Meyer focuses on limited regions and is therefore double as efficient to get with Sawadawogo the same way. So it's good that we didn't send Sawadawogo to too many regions. I think I'll keep our scouts the way it is because I want to see the difference in efficiency between Myra and Salvini, between the double efficiency and the regular one. Obviously, we just started the scouting, so no reports yet, but give this a month in game and we should have a list. If we want, we can also create a U23 team, but I'm actually not sure I can afford it right now. And we kind of are a U23 team at the moment, so I think I'll wait one year. There we go then, I'm pretty sure that's it when it comes to our season preparation. Damn, I tried to be invited to a 12 de Bessage, but it looks like we're not invited this year. Anyway, not the end of the world. No, 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 I didn't want to hear this. I did not want to get this email. 
We've got an evolution of potential, I didn't know this was a thing! As a result of testing after winter preparation, the trainers have updated their evaluation of the potentials of the young riders. We have a regression of potential. Alex Baudin has worse potential than at the start of his career. From 5.5 out of 6 potential to 5. No! He was supposed to be our star! Looks like we can see part of our scouting on this page as well. Looks like we've got plenty of riders on these scouting reports before we even get to our first race. So let's take a look at that. Looks like both Insilvini and Meyer have brought a rider to detection level 3, which is Peretti and Rupin here, an Italian and a Swiss rider. But they don't exactly shout godlike talent to me yet. I am intrigued by the Congo rider, Clement Badibanga. Let's try and use the observe button right here and see if we can get to know him a bit better. I will do the same with both Ambrosini, who seems to be a time troll and mountain specialist, so potentially a stage racer, and Damiano Conte for exactly the same reason. I have no clue if these riders are remotely good though. We should know more about these three riders by the 7th of February. We are at the end of January so we have to select our new national team, Switzerland or France, our team is Swiss so let's do exactly that. Before we ride our first race it looks like our team has gotten better, I don't know which riders, I think Peter Kellerman is one of them because I think he was 70 flat and now he's 71, he's also our second best rider suddenly. The rest of the riders seem relatively the same, but there's probably some changes here or there. Here we are then, the first race of our season with Alex Baudin at the helm, we've got Grand Prix Cyclist La Marseillaise, 70 hills, 71 acceleration, this fits him on paper. Next to that, a strong team around him like Kellerman, Charin, Flynn, Voisard, Brun and Trastour. Okay, maybe Trastour is not the strongest rider here. <laughs> Let's hop into the race. Oh my god, this kid is gorgeous. I love it, especially with the leg and arm warmers. Looks so good in the rain right here. Anyway, let's try and move forward. I want to try and get in the breakaway with Alois Charin. Let's do so together with Felix Gull and all these riders up there. The breakaway has been formed. A group of nine with pretty solid riders in here, like the Felix Gull I mentioned earlier. But in the end, we have Charin, so I'm happy with being in the breakaway and... We just avoided that crash very narrowly here. Jose Mendes crashing out of the breakaway. Another crash in the peloton. Another six riders down. Riders keep on crashing left and right to the point that I'm surprised that I have not been a part of any crash so far. There's been like 10 of them. Oh my god, Chris Froome is down. Oh no, another crash. Riders are literally crashing left and right, aren't they? Froome is abandoning. Oh no. Ah. Oh. His Tour de France goals, it's all burning. The break now has a gap of two minutes on the peloton where Fernandez of Cofidis is really upping the tempo to the point where my yellow bars are melting on our riders. So let's hope we can somewhat survive with the likes of Baudin and Sean Flynn here. With 30k to go, they are attacking in the breakaway. I'm trying to keep tempo with Chanan to keep myself in front of the peloton, but it looks like Rocha is about to catch Chanan right here. Let's make his job a bit harder by going 90 here. I'm badly positioned in the peloton with my train because I... I bottled it. I bottled the creation of my train. So let's hope I can get to the front ASAP right here. We are back nearing the front of the group. Charin has been caught. I'm trying to move up a bit more on the right here. There we go. But my yellow bar on Baudin is not exactly likable. So let's try and recover a bit in the upcoming descent right here. Because we've got one climb to go in today's race. Here we go. Final climb. Looks like we've got a move right there by the Arkea rider. That is Nicolai de Perichon, Nance Peters and so forth trying to follow. Gonna try and follow it, Sean Flynn here for Baudin. Let's try and do so in the middle there. Let's do 85. Let's not spend all the yellow we have on Baudin. Let's keep ourselves in the wheel, just like that. 65, nothing too much. Another move right there. That is from Perichon once again. Let's hope we can just hold on. We got over the top. Perfect. 46 people here. Sean Flynn to help out. Let's put him on. 65, recover some energy and then do a proper lead out towards the end. The last sprint is pretty flat, so we can't go too early. 3.5 kilometers to go, let's up it towards 85 on Sean Flynn. That might be too early, I don't know, but I'll do it anyway. 2.5k, 2 kilometers, let's go 95, there we go, let's start our sprint with Flynn. But that's gonna have to launch early. I fucked it, I think I bottled it, I think I bottled it. I think I bottled it. Baudin's gonna have a top 5, perhaps. Perhaps, I'm not even sure. It's gonna be 6 nothing. but Cyril Barth is the winner of the Grand Prix La Marseillaise. We finished 6th in our first race, which is pretty decent, but I would have hoped for a bit more personally. While we did get pretty far in the sprint there with the energy we had, I think I launched a bit too early with my lead out, and as a consequence, not the ideal sprint for Alex, but... Hey, we tried our best. I think if I didn't bottle my train's positioning that much in the run into the last 30 kilometers, I probably would have had more energy on domestiques, which means that I would have had a better sprint train at the end. So 
I think it all comes down to the basics, trying to keep my energy in control. Nonetheless, a decent start to the season, a sixth spot in Marseillaise. And apparently that's exactly what we needed for our sponsor objective, a top 10 with Baudin is perfect. Nonetheless, we've got an email about Baudin and two other riders, Weiss and Brun, that their training is not exactly going as planned, so... Let's take a look at that. Looks like four riders figured out that they like a groundbreaking training style. So let's give them exactly that. That should better their training in the upcoming months compared to their current one. There we go. Also, it looks like we've got some more good news. Sean Flynn with 71 flat now, 71 acceleration. So a bit of a bonus there. One small feature I would love in PCM is if this page had some more when it comes to the uh, evolution of riders. So for example, if Sean Flynn grows, that there's a green arrow next to his name if he grew in the last month. Or in case of an older rider that gets worse over time, a red arrow. Because now I kind of have to guess based on my memory whether a rider has grown or not. We've now ventured into February, the 8th to be exact, which means that our observations are done for. When it comes to Badibanga, not exactly the biggest talent. Same for Ambrosini really, but I'm kind of shocked that I don't know too much more about Conte because we did observe that rider, but... No extra info is given for us, except for perhaps a few stats. I'll go ahead and observe Jacopo Peretti because I think he's the most evaluated rider we currently have. And next to that, I feel like he's only 16, so there's a chance that his potential is relatively high. When it comes to our Swiss scout, I found a rider with 65 mountain already at the age of 17. So I'll observe this man because this could be a pretty damn solid talent. Kevin Moser. I'll do the same with this Egyptian man, Fuad Osama. There we go. We should know more about these three riders by the 21st of February. But I'm afraid that's gonna be for next time. Thank you very much for watching the first episode of our Tudor Pro Cycling Career Mode. I'm so enthusiastic about starting this one. I hope you are as well. And I guess I'll see you soon for what comes next. Goodbye.